Hey, Smitty Halibut here. Uh, this is a unique type of video for me. Normally I'm doing electronics or ham radio stuff, but today I'm going to be doing a little bit of Star Wars fandom. My favorite droid, my spirit droid, if you will, is Chopper. C1-10P, also known as Chopper. He is from the Star Wars Rebels cartoon and TV show, and he is my favorite droid of all time. He's kind of a jackass. Uh, he's brilliant. He's very good at what he does, but he's kind of cranky and cantankerous, and um, and I love him. And he's got these little arms up here, which are super expressive. Uh, if you notice, this is a little wind-up chopper, um, but uh, I can't do it with one hand. But you'll notice that he's kind of a mishmash of parts. Like he's got a little panel right here on the front that's a little kind of off kilter. He's got like a caster wheel, not a standard droid wheel there. His two arms are different. They're mismatched. Uh, he's kind of a little junk droid kind of put together with a lot of spare parts. But he's got a lot of personality and he's a great little droid. And I have been resisting the urge to get into the full-on droid building hobby, the ones where they take 10 to 15 to $20,000 to build a full-size droid. But recently at Disneyland, there has been um, Star Wars Land or the Black Spire Outpost or Galaxy's Edge, it's a lot of different names, but basically it's all Star Wars and uh, it's completely in, um, in character the entire time. It is a completely immersive as far as uh, Disneyland lands go. But one of the things that they have there is a shop called the Droid Depot where you get to build and assemble your own droid. They don't have parts to make a chopper, but they do have parts to make an R5 unit and they have all white parts. And white parts will be pretty easy to paint into the right colors. So this is pretty close to a chopper, uh, the head shape is very similar, although it does have this kind of silver band here um, that Chopper does not have. If you look a little bit closer, and forgive me, I'm doing the camera work myself here. If you notice, Chopper does not have that band. Kind of the conical section connects directly to his body, whereas R5, uh, he's got that little silver band in the middle there. Um, you'll notice that R5 also still has all three of his eyes attached, so one of those will have to come off, Chopper doesn't. R5 has two different arms in front, two of these, um, the little utility arms right here. Uh, he's got two of those, whereas Chopper only has one, has the one. Um, and there are various other little differences here or there that I'm kind of willing to ignore. Uh, for example, R5's arms, both of his arms match, but we can, we can get pretty close with some modifications to R5, a lot of paint um, and whatnot. One of the other things that the Droid Depot droids have is they um, they have they come with a remote control. You can drive them around, um, and they make sounds and they light up and things like that. But there is a little slot in there where you can insert what's called a Droid personality chip, and unfortunately, I don't have one to reverse engineer. So this one sounds like a standard R, uh, R unit. So he sounds kind of like R2-D2. Um, but Dr uh, Chopper sounds very different. Chopper has his own very unique personality. They don't have Chopper droid personality chips, but it is my intention when ch personality chips are available again to get one, reverse engineer it. It is my theory that it is a flash card with some audio files on it. And there may be some DRM because it's Disney, um, but I will bet you with a little bit of effort, we can go in there and reverse engineer those files and put our own sounds on there to make it sound like Chopper. But that's what I'm gonna be trying to do, is turn that into that, at least as close as I can get it. A Couple of things, luckily, don't fall. The heads come off, right? So inside is a little column with some connectors in there, some um, spring-loaded contacts that uh, you can kind of push in. I don't know if you can see that they're spring-loaded. And then they connect into the top of the droid here. There are some contacts in there. Uh, and I can Dremel this off, this little silver ring here, I can Dremel that off and just make the whole head a little bit shorter, but then I have to make that column in the middle shorter as well, otherwise the head's just going to be sitting, you know, above the top of the droid, and you'll see all of this mechanism inside, which I don't necessarily want. So i got to find a way to shorten that inner column. 
Uh, but that's what I'm going to be trying to do next. I'm going to see if I can modify this R5 and turn it into a chopper. Let's see how it goes. So R5 has lost his silver ring. That's off to a good start. I got a little bit of cleanup work to do under there, but the ring has been cut off. Uh, to get to it cleanly, I had to cut off the bottom rim in several different pieces. Um, and th this was kind of on the bottom edge of the silver ring. And then once that got out of the way, then I was able to get the Dremel tool in there nice and parallel and get a pretty good clean cut on that. Uh, there's still a little bit of cleanup work that needs to be done in there, and I still need to figure out how to shorten that column. That's going to be a little bit challenging. Got a few ideas, but it may involve some glue. We'll see. So, keep working. So, Chopper has a neck. We have to go... Uh, this is what I was meant when I was saying that I needed to shorten the column on the inside of the head so that the head comes down a little bit lower. Although looking at uh, how where I cut the head, I think it's going to bump into the gray part of the neck there. Um, I may have to, I don't know whether I want that to go around the outside of the gray or if I want a little bit of that gray piece down to the bottom showing. Right now as it is, I think it'll set on top of some of that gray piece and so that'll be exposed. But that all part turns as part of the head. So I don't know if I'm too worried about that. But I got that part done and cleaned up a little bit, and so uh, now I gotta go figure out how to shorten that column. All right, so that's the inside of the head. Hey, look, a head. The inside of the head, it's got that column with three screw holes there, and they go down and uh, connect into a part of that is the top of the head. There's also that cover there that I tried removing, and it doesn't actually come out. It's not just held in by that one screw. I think there's some glue in there. Um, but that is what covers all of the electronics. And by all of the electronics, I mean there are three LEDs. So I'm not too worried about the LEDs. Chopper's eyes never light up, at least not that I've ever seen. Um, so I need to take that column off without breaking any of the wires and find some way of shortening it by seven eighths of an inch. When you look at the head on the droid, on the body, this right here is about seven eighths of an inch. So that's how much that's how much I need to shorten that column by so that the head sits down flush on the body. There's a little tiny board in there that is the <clears throat> head side of those contacts. They're just little spring-loaded contacts that we have to be careful not to dump out. Or at least if we do, that, shoot, that we don't lose them like that. That was a screw, which hopefully I can refine. But if not, it shouldn't be too hard to replace. But so there are the little spring contacts in there and I'm going to be very careful with those and then here's the inside of the head and so I'm debating I think I just want to shorten that column there and then worst case I have to screw into the head and it'll and the screws will pop out of the top of the head which I think I'm okay with but I'm gonna go see if I can find that screw that I just dropped
Remember how I said I had to be careful with all those spring-loaded connectors? Damn it. So I was trying to push one of the screws out of there and it took a lot of force. And when it finally went, all the things moved around. So, hang on. Here's one of the springs, a little tiny thing like that. Um, there's another one, believe it or not. There's a third one. All of the pins in the head. What am I looking for down here? So, there's that ring on the inside of the head here. And it's about the right height that if I were to try and cut that ring off and screw directly into the top of the head, which will probably end up being covered by his antenna anyway, then that would be pretty darn close to the right height. Problem is that that's gonna be kind of a raging pain in the butt to try and get in there with a Dremel and cut that out. The alternative is this is the column that screws into it, and I could cut 7 eighths of an inch off of that pretty easily. Let's see where it's not quite so backlit. Uh, cut 7 eighths of an inch off of that pretty easily coming down this way. I've got a little key there, but I can deal with that. Um, the problem is that the lip that the screw heads catch onto are right at the end of this. And when you cut this off by 7 eighths of an inch, that's just a straight cylinder. There's no lip in there for the screw, screw to grab onto. So this would be the easier modification, but then when it's done, I won't have a way to simply screw this onto the head because that lip is gone. But it's a heck of a lot easier modification. Um, cutting that off to the right size and everything would be super easy. And I'm trying to figure out if there is, like I might be able to use a longer screw and grab it right here, use this as the lip, um, and just use a longer screw. Because I have some long M3s with, um, you know, with nuts on the other side that I could probably do that with. That might be easier. All right, so I found some screws that will fit in there. Uh, they're M3s and they're a little bit large, but that's okay because I've got a tap. So I've got an M3 tap inside. I haven't actually tapped these out yet, but they will, there's enough there that they can grab into the plastic. And with a tap, hopefully it won't like break the plastic and split it apart if I screw it in too hard. Um, so I've got the right screws there. Then furthermore, if I, shoot, let's see if I can do this, sorry. Um, so here's the column, and I don't know if you can see it, but I've done a little scratch. Um, I used my square, or the, not a square, whatever this thing is called, and I set it to three quarters of an inch instead of um, instead of seven eighths. I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra because I think the head doesn't go down on the body as far as I want it to. So I got three quarters of an inch there, and I just kind of went around and used the tip of that to to scrape a line all the way around this column. So that line right there, that little scrape line is three quarters of an inch up. And if I take this and mount it on the top of that, it just barely, I'm looking at that, realizing that that may not work as well as I would like it to. I measured it once and it just barely did what I wanted to do. If it grabs, it's going to just barely grab. I might need longer screws. That's what it was. I was measuring when it was 7 eighths up, and that gave it just a little bit of overlap. I may have to go with 7 eighths on this. I'm going to start with 3 quarters and see if that works, and if it doesn't, then I'll, I'll cut another eighth of an inch off. Let's give it a shot.
time. Well, might have accidentally created a legend there. <laughs> Not so much accidentally, but just the melt of the plastic may have done what I wanted it to do anyway. Let's see how that looks. I just cut the key off. So there's the key going into the body of the droid, and there's the key going into the head. I think that was the orientation. I'm pretty sure they were on the same side like that. That doesn't look right. And that doesn't look right, so yeah. That cut fits a lot better. Okay, so I was looking at the gap kind of, the, because this isn't a perfect ridge and neither is that. And so I think they fit best together like that, where the key and the key are on the same side. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark right there. That's where the key was. And we'll use that when lining this up. So key next to the key on the same yeah because my pencil mark already already rubbed off. So the problem that I think I'm going to run into with this is that I, these have to be perfectly level, and I don't think they are. I think that one's a little bit longer because otherwise the head is going to be off kilter a little bit. So I'm going to have to do that one pretty darn closely, but I think that will do what I want it to do. And I think that screw, once I tap those holes, will be what I want. So I'm going to go get the tap and we're going to go find out. There's an M3 tap. I'm hoping that I can tap these. Except that I don't have one of the right tool to hold on to that side, do I? Dag gum it. Well, let's see what I can do with my fingers and maybe some pliers. Because I see no way that'll end poorly. Working out okay. Okay, that's probably good. We can go deeper if we need to. Okay, a little plastic dust. Well, right in the eye. That's good. That's a good idea, Smitty. All right. Plastic threads for machine screws. I'm sure it'll be fine. Famous last words of lazy makers everywhere. I'm sure it'll be fine. What's the worst that could happen? Well, you could completely screw up your piece, your work piece, and if that's a piece of metal or a piece of wood, you know, those aren't too hard to come by. In my case, it's a droid head that, assuming I can get them one at a time, which I don't think I can, I would have to go down to Anaheim to get them. So the worst case for just the part is that it's 100 bucks because I'd have to buy a whole new droid. But the reality is that I don't live near Disneyland, so the actual worst case is that it would be several hundred dollars, nor do I have annual pass anymore. So it would actually be many hundreds of dollars to go replace this piece. Why am I telling you this? Because I'm being awfully cavalier with using the wrong tools for the job. And, I don't know, maybe I figure that saying it out loud will appease the gods of luck. Loki will go somewhere else. Coyote isn't listening. I don't know. Who's some other gods of chaos and fixers? All right, I managed to tap these three screw holes, at least partially. I don't necessarily need to go all the way down because I don't think the threads are going to overlap by a whole lot, which is something I actually have some worry about. Gotta figure out how to make that better. But for now, I've got three tapped holes in there. Let's see what happens when I put a screw in it. Oh. 
Look at that. Screws in nicely. Didn't have to force it. Okay. So, the real test. Can I put this in? Key, key. So let's line those up on the same side. Put that there. Actually, hold on. If I put that in, ah, uh, look at that. Does not stick out far enough. And I don't have anything longer. Phooey. Well, one thing I could do is I could shorten these and then install some standoffs. Oh, I might be able to just remove that column entirely and install a standoff. Do I have one that's closer to the right length? That was probably too short, but it, with a, with a, uh, with a nut in there, that might be pretty close, actually. A couple of nuts in there to extend that a little bit. Those are the same size. Uh, I don't have anything in between those, but that might work out. That might work really well. If I were to just cut this ring off entirely and just use the metal standoffs, I kind of like that idea. Am I ready to make that commitment? I think I might be, because then I can fine tune the adjustment of how high up the head it is by adding and removing to that standoff stack. I think I kind of like that. I'm going to give that a shot. So, let's go ahead and start with these. I'm going to start with these. They were a little bit longer than I... Oh, hey. Maybe I should have left some of that. I might need some washers here, because that's awfully darn close to the size. Look at that. I hope those don't fall through. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by putting these standoffs in here. These were a little bit long, I think. Come on, where are you? There you go. Nope, that's a cluster. That's my name. Um, okay. One more. All right, see how I've got those three standoffs in there? Let's see what happens key to key. See if I can make this screw on like that. Actually, first, I'm just gonna put this on the droid and see if it's the right height before screwing things in. Hey, hey, do not drop, drop the droid. So if I do that and then try to come in here a little tall. There's too much of a gap there. Okay, that's what I thought. So let's shorten that gap. Let's 
So I think the way I'm going to do that is by putting two of these little ones together because I don't have anything else in the middle. So two of those together are just a little bit shorter than the big one. So let's do that. That's too short of a short one. Apparently I have two different sizes in that bin. Okay, one more stack. All right, three stacks. Okay. Again, these are soft plastic threads. I really do not want to over tighten these for fear of stripping those threads. Oh, so I, about that, those spring connectors. I found all five pins and four of the springs. I am missing one spring. For the immediate term, that is going to translate into uh, one of the LEDs will not be working. The long term, it may translate into me trying to find a source for springs. That's better. Look at that spacing. That's still a little high. I would love for that to be a little bit shorter. But I would have to route out this ring here because it's bumping up against that ring right there this there's kind of two levels it's bumping into that that higher level there and so that may be about as good as I can get right now I'm gonna go with that for now and we can shorten this later if we want to so now is the time that I am going to not worry about the electrical yet but I am going to put some pan head screws in there. Okay. Do I have any washers? I do, but not anything that's bigger than that. Okay. So, where's my screwdriver? There's my screwdriver. Wrong size, but it'll do. These are standard computer screws the smaller of the two thread standards, the metric of the two thread standards, M3. The other computer screw standard is American, or the, some fraction of inches, I don't remember what it is. They were both developed by IBM back in the 80s. Their original computers used the larger of the two threads, and I think when they switched to the ATs, when they started using the, the smaller ones, or it might have been the PS2. All right. Ha 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 ha! His head's a little wobbly. And maybe a little bit off kilter. Yep, that side over there is lifted up. This side has a bigger gap than that side does. But we have head. We have head neck removal. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I gotta be very careful with removing this head now. Okay, so this screw here is too thick. Let's modify that. of those. Like literally, I think I have a 10 pound bag of one of each of the two different size, sizes of computer screws. I got them at a flea market many years ago for the low, low price of shut up and don't make me take it home. All right, I want to make these more level. See how there's an awful lot of space there.
All right, tried to take all three of them down to this ridge right here. This part here I don't care about because it doesn't have the standoff. All I care about is the part where the standoff's gonna be. Get all of that extra out of there. Let's do this again. Line up the keys. And really, there they are. So Disney Imagineers, if you're listening, um, I'm already employed, but uh, I might be talked into doing some contract work, you know, if you uh, want some of these mad skills. <clears throat> I'm sure y'all are way capable of doing much better work than I do. But a little false bravado every once in a while. Never hurt no one. There we go. Still a little off. It's a lot better. I think I'm going to leave it the way it is right now. All right. So, our five has been shortened. Kind of chopped his neck off. Sounds much more gruesome than it is. But uh, he's looking pretty good. He's getting pretty close to looking like Chopper. Uh, well, okay, not even close. We've got a lot of paint job to do, and I may want to shorten that neck even a little bit more, but it's a heck of a lot better now than it was before. So, more work to do. Mostly paint at this point, I think. Um, he's got his third eye up here. He's got three of them. That one kind of needs to be removed and flattened down uh, because Chopper has three eyes. Chopper has three eyes, but his yellow one doesn't actually have the ring around it. It's flat against his head. Um, so I'm going to go remove that eye and then a bunch of paint job to do here. Uh, like I said, the arm's going to be painted green, even though it design-wise matches that one, not this one. This one's kind of got a, a bevel on the edge of that that the arms on R5 don't have. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint it and at least make it the same color. So the body and the arms are non-trivially different, but I think a paint job will get it awfully close to that. I'm not going to do that tonight. I don't have the right materials for it anyway. Uh, shortening this neck is really what I wanted to get done tonight. So I'm going to put this video together and post it, and we'll see what you're doing. See, uh, see what you're doing. See how you're doing. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, put, you know, as always, put them down below. Um, if there are any other droid builders or modifiers, or as we say in universe, slicers, uh, if you've got any other droid modifications or builds going on, tell me about them. I'd like to hear about it and to know that I'm not the only one who's modifying these things coming from the Droid Depot. Again, I'm Smitty Halibut. Uh, I might also start going by the, the name Crossthread. Uh, that's kind of the name of the Star Wars character that I'm building in my head. Um, for participation in these Black Spire Outpost role-playing things that they've got going on at Disney. So anyway, I'm Smitty, also known as Crossthread. Thank you so much for watching my droid modification and uh, be good humans. Ha <laughs> ha